from as little as four seven nine. Explore our range of inspiring wooden, ceramic, and marble dining tables. Plus, save twenty percent on all full price indoor lighting. Choose styles and colors to suit your home with a huge range in stock for quick delivery. Plus, interest free finance options to suit you. The Harvey Norman Spring Home Event now on. Go. T's and C's apply. See HarveyNorman.ie forward slash finance. Greatness isn't something you're born with. It requires work, dedication, self-belief, and support. In 2024, Team Ireland will travel to Paris with the hopes of a nation on their shoulders. And permanent TSB will be supporting them every step of the way. So when our Olympians and Paralympians take to the world stage, let's come together in raising a nation to greatness. Permanent TSB, proud sponsor of the Irish Olympic team and the Irish Paralympic team. Could you tell the difference between a cancerous mole and a non-cancerous mole? At Dermview Dermatology, we can and we do. We are now accepting new patients so you can get access to Dermview's largest group of consultant dermatologists within days. Find us at dermview.ie or free phone 1-800-911-665. Dermview Dermatology, treating everything on your skin from acne to skin cancer. Ireland's largest consultant dermatology group. Fancy heading stateside? Fly to North America with Aer Lingus from only €169 Euro each way as part of a return trip. Now's your chance to take in some of Boston's breathtaking sights, absorb the many cultures of New York City's boroughs, or chase thrills at some of Orlando's iconic theme parks. And with free changes on every flight, you can book with confidence. Book now at aerlingus.com. Let's fly. Offer subject to conditions and availability. Travel up to June 15th. Book by April 11th. Fair differences may apply. Football on Off The Ball With Sky It's the Old Farm Derby this Sunday Don't miss Rangers versus Celtic Live only on Sky Sports Alright, it is that time on a Thursday Just gone half seven John Giles is on the line Evening John Evening Nathan So a decent week for the Republic of Ireland They left it very late against Lithuania A much changed side But Troy Parrott scored the winner deep in injury time That followed on from the draw against Belgium on Saturday, world number one team, uh, probably one of the better performances of Stephen Kenny's reign so far. I know you were at the Aviva on Saturday. What did you make of the performance? I thought it was good, Nathan. Yeah, it was, went behind, as we know. Uh, but uh, good pace about it, good tempo, uh, good goals, uh, and a very, very good match. And I, I thought probably... Probably the best performance I think I've seen from the Irish team under Stephen. Okay. Was it just the the pace that they played at? Was it the way they set up? What was it that, that enabled them to play that well? Well, first of all, you've got to have the setup, but you have to have the players. Mm. Uh, Nathan. And, you know, the players did well. There were, there were some outstanding performances. Uh, young uh, Ogbené. Yeah. Very, very good. What a promise in that. And... You're talking about attitude. You're always looking for attitude. Well, I'm always looking for attitude. And, and this kid has a great attitude. You know, he'll, run, he'll chase, he'll run, he'll score his goal. Uh, and he's, he's, he's a real capture for us. I, I just read in the paper there, uh, I think it was today, he plays in the back four or something. He plays as a wing back, yeah, with, with his club. Yeah, amazing. To be able to, uh, I mean, one of the hardest things in football is to play up front. Mm. And you normally see players, I've seen lots of players in my time, start off as forwards and then go backwards to, to the old, you know, the old wing halves or even full backs. Uh, but I saw very, very seldom where somebody came forward. Like this lad is doing now. He's doing a really, really good job. And, uh, you know, he's up front as we, as, as we know. And like he's got Callum uh, Robinson beside him. Mm. You know, Robinson is a good goal scorer, but he, he, you know, he doesn't work all that hard. Right. Uh, you know, he, he wouldn't be assisting him now up front and doing the running around. Uh, but he's he's a lad that he needs he needs to be scoring goals to justify his position up front. Whereas you get a lad uh, like Oban runs around, chases, does it for the team and that. So he's. He's, he's, a, he's a good uh, discovery for us. So you, you'd have Ogbene ahead of Robinson when you're picking the three for those attacking positions? Definitely. Definitely. Now, it, it, that might, it might sound harsh on uh, Robinson, but if, it, like, usually when you get uh, a pair like that 
and the goal scorer, which is, is it would be regarded as Robinson. You know, you can you you live with him, not chasing around it. But this kid is scoring goals as well. Yeah. You know, so he, he's doing the two jobs. But I think uh, Robinson is only doing the one job, which is a very important job on scoring goals. Uh, but if I, was pick, if I was picking one from the two, it wouldn't be Robinson. Uh, that work rate as well that Ogbene has to go alongside the goals and the impact he can have in the final third, that work rate, it feels with him it's a, it's a little bit infectious as well that the, the players around him are going to have to work that bit harder when you see the effort that he's putting in. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's an example to everybody else to do what needs to be done. Because as we know in football, there's two things in football that we know of. You either have the ball or you don't have the ball. And obviously, the, 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 you know, when you have the ball, you use it as constructively as you can. And when you haven't got it, 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 it it's, you have, you've got to get it back. I mean, it's 50%. You know, you hear about tactics all the time. We do this, we do that. Now. You know, the main, tact, the main two tactics in football, in my opinion, is when you have the ball, you're obliged to be, to, to be as good with the ball as you possibly can. And when you haven't, everybody is obliged to get it back. Now, as you know, with a lot of players who play up front, uh, they don't see that as part of their obligation to do so, uh, because they say, "Well, we're scoring goals." I mean, Ronaldo would be a perfect example of that. You know, Ronaldo's never chased around getting the ball back. <laughs> we scored goal after goal after goal, as we know. But the ideal situation uh, is is to, for the forwards to score goals and chase around. You don't often get them. But as I say, with Ogbog, I keep getting his name mixed up. Ogbeni does that. He chases around. He's very good. And scores goals. He's, he's, he's a really, really good uh, player for us. He looks like he should be playing at a higher level than League One anyways. Well, he could well do. You know, I mean, he's, he's, he's playing the team that's doing well at the moment, isn't he? Mm. You know, so he might... Uh, I mean, if anybody watches him, he could say, well, this, is, this, kid, this kid's a winner. They'll definitely go for him. I'd be surprised if, if, if somebody in the higher divisions or the higher divisions don't go for him. Stephen Kenny, as we expected, went with his strongest starting eleven for the game against Belgium. Made six changes for the match then on Tuesday, so maybe we'll read more into the Belgium game and go through some of the players and their performances and where you see them fitting in. Uh, Jason Knight started that game. If you think back to November, he came off the bench against Luxembourg, made a made a big impact. Uh, yep. Wayne Rooney's been raving about him at Derby. He got the start uh, as part of that front three, but maybe a bit deeper at times than the other two. What did you make of him? He's good, uh, and he's good. He's good footballer. Um, it's it's not difficult to fit into that position, um, but um, you know he, he he did his bit. Uh, I think he can get better, and with more matches, uh, I think he will get better. Mm. Uh, he was very good. Cullen was very good. Yeah, you know, he's a lad now. Was on the go all the time, trying to do something. Good attitude, uh, and that's your starting point with with, with any team. Nathan, you know. What's his attitude like? What's he doing? Is he having a go? Because every player, no matter who he is, doesn't play well in every match they play. But they try to. And, and I think that's, what, that's the, the, the thing that came out mostly from me from the match on, on, uh, against Belgium. That you know, there was nobody not having a go. And they haven't got the ball, getting it back. Uh, it, was, it was a good all-round performance. And uh, I, I thought uh, Jeff, Jeff Hendrick was the best game I've seen him playing in for a long time and he did his bit as well Josh so Cullen it's very, very very encouraging in that, in that sense yeah Josh Cullen seems to become a, a very important player very quickly that there, there's no real like for like replacement and I think you probably touched on this last year that you know these players go from having two or three caps to having 15, 16 caps and be a lot more comfortable he seems a prime example of that and I think he's spoken about it the, the extra bit of confidence of I've taken on a pass now compared to a couple of years ago where he might have played it safer. Are you seeing that in him, that that he carries himself differently on the pitch now in the middle of midfield? Yeah, I think so. You know, we, we've always put that down to experience, Nate. You know, because lads come into the team, they're playing with strange players, they're playing in, in, in the strange uh, set-ups, uh, and it, take, it does take a bit of time. You get some lads come into it straight away, they're fine. But the lads, it takes them a little bit of time to settle into the team and, and get their confidence and play with confidence. And definitely there's a big improvement in, in uh, uh, young Cullen. There's no doubt. Is he a good passer? Yeah, yeah. He's a good all-round player, uh, Nathan. You know, you wouldn't, I wouldn't put him in one category or another, but he's a, he's a midfield player. 
but does his best to get the ball back to use it as well as he possibly can. Uh, he, he plays for the team, he does his work. Um, so you can't ask for much more than that. I mean, lads can only do what they can do. And some lads are blessed uh, with more ability than, than, than young Cullen is. But he does what the best he does the best he can with what he has. And that's all you can ask. It does seem to have a good partnership as well with Jeff Hendrick now that they, they understand each other's games. So maybe that's why we're seeing that sort of performance out of Jeff Hendrick. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's an overall uh, improvement with, with, with Lance who have been in the team for a while. And it does take him a while to settle in. Aiden. But, but, you know, we, we're, we're seeing the best. I mean, the, like, Saturday's game was a very, very, very difficult game. You know, they went in front. Uh, I know they weren't playing with all their full players, but they had a lot of good players on the pitch that haven't gone in front. You think, well, they could go away with it now, but they didn't. That didn't happen. You know, the early start stuck out, it stuck out, it got back into the game. And, uh, you know, by the end of the game, they, 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 they were the better team. They could have won the match. So, you know, that's a good sign. Defensively, it seems quite straightforward now, though Ireland have a lot of options with Coleman... Duffy and Egan. I heard you last Thursday night with Richie uh, defending Seamus Coleman from the criticism he was getting from Jamie Carragher. I don't know if he could have done much more for the opening Belgium goal. And how you see him in a in a back three and the right of a back three compared to that usual role as a right back or a wing back. Well, I think Seamus can play anywhere mm. and give you what he's got. I mean, for the the, the the Belgium goal. I mean, it was a very very well taken goal, Nathan. In, in, uh, you know, as soon as the player uh, came in, came inside. He, he, he didn't give the goalkeeper a chance to get settled. It was really well taken. He took it very, very quickly. He didn't give Seamus Coleman a chance to get back at him. Uh, it was a really, really well taken goal. But I thought, I, well, I'm a great admirer of Seamus Coleman. First of all, because of his honesty. When you look at players, no matter what, what position they play in, are they honest in what they do? I don't get anybody more honest than, than, than Seamus Coleman. And uh, I think the point I was making last week is, was, was Callagher saying about... Uh, you know, playing for Everton, that he's, he's because of his age, and, and I've heard a few people say that. That's always the way. You know, the, the, the people, the critics, or anybody will, will attack players in a team that's not doing well like Everton, and they're usually the oldest guys. I had that experience of it years and years ago. We played in the cup final against Sunderland with Leeds, and we got beaten. At, and I think it was Bre- uh, Bremner and myself. Mm. That we were finished, we were done. I was the oldest in the team. Uh, we were finished, done, out of it, gone. Then we started next the next season, went 29 matches and beaten to go on and win the league. That's that's what happens in the with the press. You know, they'll always pick, in my opinion, the oldest player, and because of his age. I mean, you saw it recently with, with, with Ronaldo, for example. He's 36. When Manchester United weren't winning a few matches there, it was Ronaldo. He wasn't doing this and he wasn't doing that. That's always the way. But with Seamus Coleman, I'd I'd play if I was picking a team for my life. James Coleman would be in it. Right. That's high praise. Well, he deserves it. I mean, he's always been an honest. Like, I thought he was outstanding in, 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 uh, against Belgium the other day. And he was playing in, 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 the, in the back three, really. Mm. You know, as we know, right, right back is his best position. But he'd give you, he'd give you a show anywhere, James. He's just as honest as, honest as can be. A really, really top class lad. How did you uh, take the criticism after, was it the 73 Cup final against Sunderland? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, and I knew I knew it wasn't true. I was, we had a bad day. We got a bad defeat. Uh, uh, it was it was you know we were we were there for 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 for, for getting a hiding in the press, which we did. Um, but when you're, you like after the match, we knew we knew we didn't play well. Yeah. you know, Sunderland beat us. We didn't play well. But luckily enough, with, with being good pros and like Don, okay, after we got over that, he said, right, next year we go again. And we'll try and go through the season unbeaten. So, in other words, it wasn't down. Sometimes, if the spirit's not right, you lose a match like that, and everybody's getting onto each other, and you really collapse. Nathan, yeah. we have to take it on the chin, keep quiet until the game started again next season, which comes around very, very quickly. Win or win or lose, especially when you win, it comes around quickly. You've got to go again, which we did. Uh, in fact, I think by the end of the season, Sunderland didn't get promotion. And we went on to win the league. That's the game. It goes from one year to the next. But you have to respond in the right way. It's no good. I mean, if I know good, me putting an article in the paper saying, well, I'm as fit as I ever was. I'm as good as I ever was. And so what? You know, journalists have their job to do. They do it on the day. But you have your job to do, which is to get over those particular things 
uh, bad situations and go again. I, I presume you weren't picking up the paper on Monday morning to see what they were saying about you. I never did that anyway, Nathan, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, I used to have those on the heavens and the people used to do uh, uh, markings, you know, you got 7 out of 10 or 9 mm. out of 10 or 6 out of 10. Uh, and I, I'd learned very early on. Now, don't even look at them because I used to play in some matches, Nathan, where I was hopeless, very bad, and I'd be the star man. And then I remember playing in some matches where I played really well and I got 5 out of 10. So... I knew it was just uh, don't get carried away one way or the other. Just leave it as it is. Read the papers, but don't read them too much. And sometimes not read the papers at all, whether you play well or whether you don't play well. Uh, you're lying there about Seamus Coleman that if you had to pick a team and stake your life on it, uh, Seamus Coleman will be in it. Uh, who else will be in it? Um, well, well, I think Duffy's done a great job for us. Nathan. I think he went out of the, he went out of the, the, the his club team there for a while, and he was out of the international team for a while. But I think he's a vital member for us. You know, he's a strong centre half. You call old fashioned now. You don't expect him to get on the ball, but he gets the job done and gets it done really well. I think he's a very very valuable player uh, uh, for us in, in, at, at the back. I get the sense from listening to you. You like this Irish side. You like what they're about at the moment. Yeah, well, we've got some good... Well, obviously, we've got some good players. I mean, look at the goalkeeping situation. You know, Keller is brilliant. And then, then the, the other lad, I can't think of his name at the moment, uh, comes into it. You know, we, we've got some good defenders. It's always, always, the, always the hardest to get a goal scorer. You know, and hopefully we keep our fingers crossed that the lads are in now. And we, we've got uh, Parrot coming along. Hopefully, uh, who's he's going to learn learn his trade in a way that uh, he, he has the ability to be one of the top class players and if he's doing his stuff and he's playing up front for us and scoring it, it, well he's got a really good goal as we know against uh, uh, Lithuania the other day but he's capable of doing it he's got to get a grip of himself now he's been at Spurs he hasn't really done well for himself I think he's got to get a hold of himself now and, and fulfil the promise that he's got um, and it's it's always usually the last thing in the team to to fulfil a team is to get a, get the striker. They're, they're hardest to get, Nathan. So hopefully we've got some now. And I think you know the the the, the, the defence is very very good and has been for a long time. And we got the midfield players playing like they did. Uh, then we should get better and better. I think. All our football coverage is brought to you by Sky. Don't miss Manchester United against Leicester on Saturday Night Football. That is live on Sky Sports. Let's talk about Tuesday then against Lithuania. You brought up Troy Parrott and it was a heck of a strike. Uh, I think we all thought the game was done at that stage uh, when he turned up and smashed one in from 25 yards to give Ireland the victory. Like, we were all guilty maybe of getting carried away about his potential a couple of years ago when he made his debut and he was at Tottenham and he was playing in pre-season and you wonder could he be next in line for Harry Kane? Could he be the first sub? And never quite happened for him. A couple of load spells. He's spent the season in League One. It's you know He's in a bit of good form at the moment but there have been times where it haven't gone well for him. He gave an interesting press conference last week where he spoke about sort of grabbing the opportunity that is there from and, and maybe realising even when he was out of the team at MK Dons this season that he's only going to get one shot at this career and that he needs to treat it properly both when he's on the pitch but also maybe more importantly when he's off the pitch and behaving in the correct way, um, you know, preparing his body in the correct way, resting in the correct way. And listen, we see the potential that's there. He is only 20, so you know, it's, it's, I guess it's a great thing that he's, he's had that realisation now before instead of having it at 27, 28 and you know, 10 years are wasted. Well, it'll be far too late then, Nathan. Now, the, 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 the future will show whether he has got a grip of himself. See, you get a lot of talented lads, Nathan, as we know. And I've seen so many, you know, in the past uh, that say, oh, if only if only he did this and only he has this. The, the main thing about football, or to be a professional footballer, or indeed anything else, is to put the effort in. That's your starting point. You don't even have to have a lot of ability to try as hard as you possibly can. And what happens with lads, I think, like uh, 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 Troy Parrott, they're, they're a very, very talented lad, and they think they have them made before they even start, uh, Nathan. And I hope now he gets a grip of himself before it's too late to go on and be the player he should be. And the only way he'll do that is to work at it, behave off the pitch and work on the pitch. You know, that's your starting point. You don't have an awful lot of ability to try hard. 
I mean, one of the greatest examples of that would be Roy Keane. You know, Roy Keane wasn't a blessed individual uh, like like Scholes or Beckham or, or Giggs, Lancey played with. But by God, he had the attitude to do it. And he was able to dominate those lads that he played with because of his attitude. And that's mainly when you don't have the ball, to be able to chase around, get after people. Now, it, it, like Parrot, even though he's playing up front, or people like him, they can still work very, very hard, Nathan, when they haven't got the ball and be, be to the team. But what, I, what you, you, you find there is that he wasn't looking after himself. He hasn't been looking after himself. Now, hopefully, he's got it in his head. This doesn't last very long, Nathan. Careers go very, very quickly. I've seen it happen so many times with lads who start off very well and then they, they get ahead of themselves, they get a big head, they're living it up and all that carry on. And then before you know it, their career is finished. And I think this young lad, Pallet, has a lot of ability, I think, but he's got to now get a real grip of himself to become the player that he should be. And that's dedication, training, all the various things that you have to do. To make it in football is very, very hard work, Nathan. Yeah, and it continues to be hard work. No matter how many years you play, you go back pre-season training after 10 years, and it, you still have to put the same effort in again and again and again and again. And that's, where he, that's the attitude he's got to get in his head. I mean, he's had a, little, he's had a spell at Spurs, and he's had to move out of it. I think if he was really, really putting it in at Spurs, he would still be there probably in the first team. So he's got to make the best of his ability. Yeah, and listen, it's it's very hard, I'm sure, when you're 17 and everyone's telling you you're the next big thing, not to uh, believe it. And look, I think well, you have to you have to do it, Nathan. I mean, it, 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 it's 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 something that some of the lads have naturally. I've seen lads, outstanding players, uh, at 17, and everybody telling them how good they are, and they were good and stayed good and continued to work at it. You know. Definitely, I've, I've seen loads of them. I mean, there was young lads coming through at Leeds when I was there, Eddie Gray, Peter Lonimer, lads like that. They were dedicated even at that age to do what needed to be done. And lads do go astray. And I hope from young Parrot's sake that he does get a grip of himself now and fulfills his ability. It, because it, it, it's a terrible waste for any lad, I think, not to do what's needed to be done. And before you know, you're finished. And you say, what a mess I made of that. It, he has an opportunity now to come back in and fulfil the, 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 the ambition or the, the ability that we've yeah. seen in him. He has the ability, there's no doubt. Now just work at it and do what's needed to be done. All right, well, hopefully we'll see the very best of Troy Parrott over the coming years in an Ireland jersey. John, great stuff as always. Thanks, thanks, Lynn. Talk to John Giles next Thursday, as always, here at Half 7. If you missed any of that, you'll get it on the OTB Sports app. Football on Off The Ball With Sky Don't miss Man United versus Leicester On Saturday Night Football Live only on Sky Sports Could we survive on Mars? Where are all the Irish dinosaurs? Why do planes leave trails in the sky? These are just some of the questions answered on News Talk's podcast, Future Proof, with Jonathan McRae. Researchers are now